Right, hi everyone, I'm just trying to get Chloe on with us. Before we start talking about US placements. anyone joining we'll start just in a 30 seconds i'm just gonna get chloe on with us So while we wait a few more seconds, I'll just give a little intro. So my name's Anna and I am... Now it's kicked me out. Um, so my name's Anna and I'm the admin officer at Amicus, um, have been since last year. Before that, I was on a placement in Texas, which is what we will be talking about today. So I think Chloe's going to join us now. Oh, we've got Chloe here. Yes, we do. Hi. Hi. We made it on. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. I was just giving a little intro of myself um, and I got to Texas placement, so that leaves us nice in. <laughs> so I'll just um, give a brief explanation of what I was doing. Then if you want to do, let us know what you're up to at the moment. You're That's more up to date than I. Um, so I was on placement in Texas at the Dallas Capital Habeas Unit um, last January to March before coronavirus obviously ruined everyone's plans and I had to come home. Um, so while I was there, I was working on post-conviction appeals, um, doing a variety of things, mitigation um, and sort of investigation and then uh, drafting appeals as well to the Supreme Court. Um, and Chloe is now doing that exact placement, but remotely. Um, so Chloe, how long have you been there now? I'm about halfway through my three month placement. So I've been there for, well, here, <laughs> working there for a <laughs> month and a half. My plans got totally wrecked by coronavirus too. Um, yeah. But actually it's, it's not too bad actually. And I've been doing pretty much the same stuff as you, a lot of mitigation at the moment and some general investigation work. Um, and I've just been given my first legal assignment. So until now, I haven't really done any legal work, which has been a nice break from the bar course. Yeah, um, I quite enjoyed the um, the mitigation stuff as well. As <laughs> a bit of a detective, it was so much fun. Um, yeah, how do you think it differs then? In So I guess for me, I had prison visits, which you obviously won't be able to do. Um, but otherwise, how do you think it's differed doing it remotely? Do you feel like the work's the same? Well, it's hard to say because I suppose from your end, you haven't done it virtually. And from my end, I haven't <laughs> been in person. Um, but I'm hoping to go for about a week at the end of August. Um, so it'd probably <laughs> have been more useful for me to answer this question then. Um, <laughs> we'll have a, a catch up then. Please. Yeah. <laughs> But as you say, I don't think there is a great amount of difference. I don't feel that the tasks I'm doing are any different. Literally, um, as you said, I think the only thing is the clients. I haven't met any of the clients in person, which I think is a big part of the internship. Um, but I've still been able to speak to them over the phone and it's it's nearly as good, I'd say. So but you'd be able to speak to them on the phone? Yeah, yeah. Um, over the phone and I've still been sort of in loads of um, Zoom meetings with different experts and things like that. So still getting some communication. How do you find the interacting with them over the phone? Because obviously I can't speak to that. I didn't, never did that. I would say it's different because you don't get the whole body language. You don't get the, I don't know, the same sense of them as a person. But at the same time, it's kind of better for really focusing on what they're saying and mm -hmm. I suppose it's just a different sensory experience what did you think about the in-person meetings what do you think they would have been different over the phone yeah actually because you sit with a glass so we were on the phone as well but obviously in a very different ah. scenario. yeah um I mean it's a, I think the environment of 
death row it's probably the only thing that you're missing out on and obviously that's not particularly nice anyway it's an experience but it's um not necessarily a nice one um but i'm guessing the things that you talk about and the nature of the conversation is probably not that dissimilar um and i wonder if maybe they're quite you know they might be more comfortable in fact talking to you on the phone than they would be in person um i'm not sure if it feels more private for them as well I don't know. I get the sense that they like in-person interaction. They like seeing the internet. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of entertainment for them, yeah. <laughs> and it's just not quite the same over the phone. But... Yeah. You didn't get the introduction that you were the uh, English person coming to talk to Texas Death Row. They were all uh, very excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. But it's like a nice surprise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sure they're doing that behind the scenes. You just don't get the, uh, the hype <laughs> right there. <laughs> No, I think they're like pleasantly surprised. They're like, you're not American when I'm on the phone. And I'm like, nope, like on the other side of the world. But <laughs> Yeah, um, which I think we can give them a lot of like escapism through that, though, which is why they like talking to the interns, right? Because they can hear about all the mm, wonderful, not so wonderful things that are going on in England. Um, we've got a question, actually. So what was it like going to death row and seeing people through the glass? Yeah, it was, I mean, you can't really imagine what the atmosphere there is like. It feels like um, a time capsule. I think i um, spoken to Chloe about this before as well. It feels like, you know, time stops. There's no clocks or anything. And then you're in there for four hours. Um, through the glass is a weird experience, especially because in none of the conversations, and I imagine it's the same for you, Chloe, none of my conversations felt, threatening or you know they weren't particularly talking about anything that I would find really concerning or that would make me feel unsafe so it felt very wrong really that they would be on the other side of the glass um even with um you know the reason for them being there but um I really got the impression that it was right that I would be on one side of me, you know, and them on the other. Um, it also really put into perspective the things that um, sort of the strikes luck almost that put them there and me on the other side. I really felt that when I left that they're behind this cage and I get to leave, which um, I always find quite difficult, which I think with this work is quite difficult, isn't it, Chloe, really? That you're, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the reasons that they end up there are not to do with you know personal choices or anything like that so no um that's something I find quite difficult um even virtually I really did get mm -hmm. this uh, first of the time capsule thing that you're saying but also like it does feel a bit like they're an exhibit and I can imagine how that's heightened when they're literally behind a glass exactly yeah exactly which is why some of them don't meet interns as well because they feel like that you know people come into this sort of watch them for a couple of hours and leave yeah um but i think the nature of the work is probably similar um it sounds like everything you said you're doing uh the investigation stuff i love doing that um but it was mostly to be fair in the office there's only a few times that i went out so um i think it's all pretty similar really yeah i still feel like i'm being quite useful so <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice feeling as well <laughs> yeah um so with the cultural differences, we often get questions about this. Um, and I know from speaking to you before that um, you felt this as well with the cultural differences. So what do you think, like, can you give any examples of like how you've experienced those remotely? Remotely? I don't think there are that many cultural differences. You know, it's still the same language. Um, America pretty much has a common law system. So we're still working within case law and stuff like that. In terms of the actual work itself, the only ma the main difference I'd say I've had is with the mitigation process. Mm -hmm. I'm never in the UK that's involved so much mitigation work, you know, looking through people's records from birth, their school yeah. records. Like, it feels like we're going through their whole lives as a team. And we just don't do that in the UK, I don't think. What about yeah. you? Yeah, with the, the mitigation was a really new thing for me. And I was doing a lot on um, sort of environmental contamination. Um, and like, I was sort of working on it thinking, I'm not sure if this is useful, whether I'm doing the right thing, because it felt so different to any legal work that I'd done here. Like I saw, you know, when I said I felt like a detective, I felt like I was doing a lot of the investigating as well as the um, the legal stuff. So that is, it, I found that quite a big difference. I mean, I loved it, though. It was great fun. Yeah. It feels fun. It feels like you're in a movie or something. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's really good. Um, it's funny that you said that there's not that many remotely because I feel like one of my biggest cultural differences was language. So um, there was like two occasions that stuck out to me. Firstly, I walked into the office on the first day and like someone showed me where to go. And I was like, oh, brilliant. Thank you. And then they stopped me in my tracks and were like, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> From England, I've just arrived. They said, yeah, no one here says brilliant. I felt <laughs> so stupid that I'd use this English word that apparently was not a thing at all. Um, so I feel like that came up and I said trackies instead of whatever the word for tracksuits is in American. Sweats, I think. I'm not sure. But maybe. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So they didn't know what I was talking about. Luckily, just the other interns, not anyone in my office. <laughs> Now that you mention it, I do feel like there are some words that I use and people are like, what is she talking about? Yeah, <laughs> it's so strange. You think English is just one language. Um, yeah, so not too many of those, um, apart from the weather was quite hot, but I can't really say much about that now. Um, yeah. You're... <laughs> yeah, here it's pretty intense as well, so for yeah. now. Um, I think our last question then for the last few minutes was um, how do you think the US placement has affected your career and I think that people ask that in terms of like how it affects your career choice and whether it's um, how it's going to be useful in your career as well so I don't know if you could speak to that. Well I think I've known for a while that I want to be a human rights and public law barrister so <laughs> I wouldn't say it's impacted it, um, which is a good thing, because it hasn't put me off in any way. Um, yeah. To the contrary, it's just made me realise that this is what I love. The work that Amicus does um, as an organisation and also that we do as interns, helping um, people appeal their death penalty sentences and, you know, quite literally um, being the difference between life and death for people. Mm -hmm. it's so important and it's so rewarding. Um, and it, yeah, I just think it's an unquantifiable experience in term personally, but also in terms of career trajectory. It's really just affirmed for me that I'm on the right track. Um, what about you? Yeah, I can agree more. Actually, you've taken a lot of my um, I had sort of random words, and you've taken most of them. Um, yeah, I think I completely agree. It's both confirmed what I want to do. So I want to, I went into law with a human rights focus and now I'm sort of leaning a lot more towards criminal law, but um, it's the same thing really. And doing appeals, that's why I like the post-conviction stuff so much um, because it sort of is that overlap between human rights and criminal law, which I really like. Um, so it's confirmed that. And also it's really just confirmed to me that, um, you know, the division between the state and the person is a lot more... Um, sort of severe I think in the US you know here you can sort of work for the CPS and then defend um, a defendant as well whereas they don't people either do one or the other I don't know if you found that as well um, it's quite an interesting mm -hmm. I sort of discovered when I was out there that people prosecute or they defend they don't do both you can't yeah you can't do both um... yeah so I think for me it really confirmed that it Firstly, pro bono work is life saving. You know, um, as you said, there literally is like the life difference between life and death in these cases. And I feel you can feel that, can't you, in the office? I found. Um, Even out of it, in my case. <laughs> yeah, in the remote office, you can feel it, yes, in sort of in the ether. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's also the really representing people who. Um, I mean, like I said at the beginning of this, who really found themselves in the system for various reasons, often not to do with personal choice. And I think that's what it's really confirmed for me that I do want to focus my work on um, representing those who the system really is stacked against. And um, although it might be emphasised in the US, it's, it is this is the same situation in the UK as well. So um, it's really important to me to make sure I either go into a field where I can do that or, you know, carry on this sort of pro bono work. And that's where Amicus is obviously um, so powerful and being able to allow people to do this kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think I'd agree with you. Mm, very, very last question before we log off is, how did you come across Amicus? If you can remember, I feel like for me, it feels like ages ago. Yeah, it was <laughs> centuries ago. Do you remember how you came across it? I... Um, it was a weird one for me because it was about five years ago it's my first year of uni and my friend had said about I think it was the innocence project about like working on death cases and this is 
I've watched, used to watch like documentaries on death cases years and years ago, very, you know, thrilling things to do when you're like 14. But um, she mentioned this and I was like, oh my God, I really want to do that. And then conveniently a month later, I went to a human rights talk at um, Leeds Uni and Mark George was there. So obviously he was talking about it and I kind of pounced on him and said, I really want to do this. How do I do this at my uni? Um, and yeah, since then, that's how I, that's how I've been involved. About five oh, nice. Think yeah <laughs> <laughs> I remember mine now I went to um one of the trainings just randomly because I was mi I was missing sort of my uni degree and learning about international uh, study stuff um and just from like the first 20 minutes of someone speaking I was just like right I want to sign up for this this is so important like I was just completely gripped for the whole weekend and I just went there expecting to learn a bit about international law but um, I'm really glad it happened because... Yeah, it... death penalty training. Yeah, yeah, the death penalty yeah. training. I think uh, it is really good for that. And um, as a little uh, promo here, students get reduced rates and members. So definitely. you should definitely sign up. Definitely uh, do it. A lot of people go to learn a bit more about international law, criminal law, whatever it is, death cases. Um, and you, then you, when you find out how Amicus works, I feel like people are sold once they know how it works um and what we're actually doing here so honestly um, first 20 minutes i was sold <laughs> she's right <laughs> this is the best advert we could have so <laughs> very much chloe um, great i think that um leads us to the end of our conversation um if anyone has any questions left or wants to get in touch with chloe or i i'm sure you can send us a message on instagram or linkedin or twitter um, or just the Amicus Instagram as well. We are very happy to answer your questions. Yeah, please do. Thanks so much, Chloe. Um, great to see you. And I hope to hear a lot more about what you've been up to soon, which I'm sure I will. <laughs> okay, speak soon. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye.